In November 2022, a little-known Silicon Valley company released a web app called ChatGPT, a large language model chatbot that turned the tech world on its head overnight. Despite employing only a fraction of a percent of the cumulative manpower being poured into artificial intelligence research by behemoths like Google, Amazon, and Meta, OpenAI has managed to take a commanding lead in the increasingly crowded race for AI superiority. In fact, ChatGPT has proven so innovative and so dynamic that it amassed 1 million users in just five days. Three weeks later, the app boasted 57 million users, and in just two months, ChatGPT hit the 100 million user mark. That's seven months faster than TikTok and more than two years ahead of Instagram. Silicon Valley's newest player has big tech scrambling to figure out how they got beat to the punch. But OpenAI's meteoric rise hasn't come cheap or without its share of controversy. However, before dissecting the astronomical costs behind OpenAI's signature app and the industry backlash accompanying its success, let's take a look at what exactly ChatGPT is. Without getting overly technical, ChatGPT is a data-crunching monster. It creates human-like written responses to user prompts by analyzing massive data sets of human-created text. The chatbot compares the words in a user's prompt with billions of pages of relevant digital information to assess the probabilities of what word will likely come next in its response. In essence, the bot doesn't understand what it's saying. It's merely digesting vast amounts of data and mathematically drawing conclusions, which it then spits out in the form of sentences and paragraphs. In contrast to the large language models, or LLMs, used by ChatGPT, virtual assistants such as Siri and Alexa are powered by more limited command and control systems, which are pre-programmed to recognize specific commands such as, what time is it, or what's the weather. In this regard, these natural language processors have an advantage in that they're able to interact with the real world. However, if you ask Alexa or Siri to think about anything outside the parameters of their program, you're pretty much out of luck. ChatGPT's programming, on the other hand, enables it to analyze the intent behind a user's prompt, allowing the bot to give more human-like responses. It's this unique ability that makes ChatGPT superior to its predecessors and has Google, Amazon, and Meta scrambling to catch up. So how did David take such a commanding lead over a field of Goliaths in the race for AI superiority? The answer is twofold, and the first part has to do with who's driving the research at OpenAI, as opposed to how many. OpenAI was founded in 2015 as a nonprofit research lab by a group that included Tesla's Elon Musk, Sam Altman, a highly successful Silicon Valley investor, Greg Brockman, the former CTO of Stripe, and Ilya Stutzgiver, a major contributor to the field of deep learning who left Google to co-found the new organization. The startup was initially funded with a billion dollars in seed money from a group that included, among others, Musk, Altman, Reid Hoffman, the co-founder of LinkedIn, Peter Thiel, PayPal's co-founder and the first outside investor in Facebook, and Paul Graham, who we'll talk about more in a moment. Outside of the Bay Area, Sam Altman is probably the least known entity on this list of tech heavy hitters. But in Silicon Valley, the 37-year-old is already a giant and arguably the driving force behind OpenAI's meteoric rise. A native of Chicago, Altman dropped out of Stanford at age 19 to serve as CEO of Looped, an innovative location app that caught the attention of Paul Graham, who has long been one of the most respected names in the tech world. While attending Harvard in 1995, Graham caught the attention of corporate America when he co-founded an early e-commerce company called ViaWeb. His platform was one of the first web applications ever created, and ViaWeb was groundbreaking that Yahoo shelled out $49.6 million to acquire the company in 1998. The deal put not only a mountain of money in Paul Graham's pocket, but it also laid the foundation for Silicon Valley's long-standing entrepreneurial culture. Two decades later, Graham co-founded Y Combinator, a startup accelerator that has launched more than 4,000 companies, including Airbnb, Reddit, Dropbox, Instacart, DoorDash, and Twitch. Graham was serving as Y Combinator's president when the company invested in Looped, 
which put Sam Altman squarely on his radar. Nine years later, Altman succeeded Graham as president of YC, where his eye for talent and an almost prescient investment acumen made the then 28-year-old a millionaire hundreds of times over. So with a CV rivaling many Silicon Valley veterans, it was no surprise that Altman was named CEO of OpenAI shortly after its launch in 2015. Armed with a billion dollars in funding, one of the organization's first move was to compose a list of the top minds in AI research and lure them to OpenAI. Nine names on that list joined the startup, with many foregoing significantly higher salaries to work with Altman on his quest to achieve true artificial general intelligence, or AGI. Arguably the holy grail of human technology, AGI is the ability of a system to perform any task a human can do. To be clear, this yet-to-be-achieved strong AI differs vastly from traditional, weak, or narrow AI, which is only programmed to solve specific problems, even in advanced forms like ChatGPT. Artificial general intelligence, on the other hand, is the substitution of generalized human cognitive abilities with a system that, faced with an unfamiliar task, could figure out a workable solution. AGI is the ultimate goal of Altman and OpenAI, and the opportunity to work on achieving it proved a strong enough draw to pull in some of big tech's best and brightest. In fact, by early 2023, OpenAI had 59 former Google researchers and 34 from Meta on staff, as well as another 100 who jumped ship from tech giants like Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. Assembling many of the top minds in the field obviously benefited OpenAI from a talent standpoint, but keeping the organization small gave the company a second advantage, which big tech, by definition, will always lack. And that is agility. According to Glass.ai, a company that deep reads millions of websites to monitor corporations around the globe, the five biggest tech firms had about 33,000 employees working directly on AI development at the end of 2022. This includes 4,970 at Google, 7,133 at Microsoft, and 10,113 at Amazon. OpenAI had 154 people doing the same research. From an operational efficiency standpoint, there's a lot to be said for being small and nimble. More importantly, OpenAI is primarily a research and development lab, not a product company, which is what the big tech firms have evolved into. As a small lab, OpenAI was able to develop and release ChatGPT without the friction that inadvertently but unavoidably arises when legions of engineers and product managers have their hands in development. The log jams created by this friction can stifle the creative process and add months, if not years, to the development of new products. Think of it as comparing the capabilities of a Navy SEAL team to that of an Army battalion, and you have a pretty good analogy. Speed and agility trump brute force for what OpenAI is trying to accomplish. An issue further stifling the big boys is that they're structured as much to produce profits as they are innovative tools meaning everything they create is expected to integrate with their existing products for the sake of monetization. Conversely, ChatGPT is a simple-to-use tool that isn't necessarily targeted at any particular niche. Anyone can employ the bot for everything from answering straightforward questions to writing research papers and complex software code. ChatGPT can amaze you if you know how to ask. Beyond the developmental benefits of being light on its feet, OpenAI enjoys relative freedom from the suffocating bureaucracy that can hobble massive corporations from the top down. For example, when Sam Altman decided to transition OpenAI from a boutique research lab into a for-profit tech firm, he was able to do so without having to untangle the miles of red tape that would invariably hinder a similar transformation at a company the size of Google, which employs nearly as many vice presidents as OpenAI has researchers. So far, OpenAI's guerrilla tactics have helped them take the tech world by storm. But its meteoric rise in record-breaking achievements haven't spared the organization from intense scrutiny and mounting criticism from outside and within.
It's difficult to imagine any innovation with the potential power of AGI being realized without stirring up significant controversy along the way. And in this regard, OpenAI has not disappointed. To begin with, the organization was founded as an open source nonprofit whose mission is to safely advance digital intelligence in a way that's most likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by a need to generate financial return. Clearly, this is no longer the case if it ever truly was. Safety, openness, and benevolence have taken a backseat to speed and profitability, a development that Elon Musk and many others in the industry have railed against quite vocally and very publicly. Musk left the organization in 2018 and has since been quoted as saying, OpenAI was created as an open-source non-profit company to serve as a counterweight to Google, but now it's become a closed-source maximum profit company effectively controlled by Microsoft. Not what I intended at all. And the Tesla CEO isn't the only one asking where the open in OpenAI went. Ben Schmidt of Nomic AI, an information cartography company whose mission is to facilitate a safer and more responsible advent of AI, believes that OpenAI has been slammed shut, and possibly for good. In evaluating a 98-page paper released by the company titled GPT-4, Technical Report, Schmidt points out that OpenAI provides no technical details about the model's training, costs, or hardware, making it their most secretive release yet. In this paper, OpenAI states that, given both the competitive landscape and the safety implications of large-scale models like GPT-4, this report contains no further details about the architecture, including model size, hardware, training compute, dataset construction, training method, or similar. To be clear, OpenAI is not a publicly traded company, so management's only obligations regarding how they operate are legal ones, not ethical ones. But any organization that flaunts such a disparity between what it preaches publicly and what it practices behind closed doors does so at its peril. In his defense, Sam Altman insists that OpenAI's overriding motivation remains the pursuit of artificial general intelligence that will benefit all humanity. And he wholeheartedly believes that OpenAI's core of talented researchers, guided however loosely by the company's founding principles, will eventually achieve this goal. However, Altman is also keenly aware of the 800-pound gorilla in the room that is big tech. Meta, Google, and Amazon aren't about to drop out of the AI race, meaning OpenAI can't afford to take its foot off the gas. In fact, the threat that ChatGPT poses to Google and its 25-year reign atop the $200 billion a year internet search industry is motivation enough for the tech giant to pour mountains of money and countless man-hours into the generative AI arms race. Market analysis firm Precedence Research predicts that the global AI market will expand at a compound annual growth rate of 38.1% to reach $1.59 trillion by 2030. And like OpenAI, Google, Meta, and Amazon are doing everything they can to carve out the most generous chunk of that money for themselves. For evidence of this, we can look back to 2014 when Google paid $500 million to acquire London-based AI research firm DeepMind. Yes, this is the organization that made a splash in 2016 when its AI-powered AlphaGo defeated world champion Lee Sodal in four out of five matches of Go, a 2,500-year-old abstract strategy board game. At the time, DeepMind's half-billion-dollar price tag seemed a hefty cost. But the same $500 million won't buy you a seat at the table now. And this isn't even factoring in the hundreds of millions that DeepMind lost before finally turning a modest $44 million profit in 2021. So where is all this money going? For starters, the cost of training large language models can reach tens of millions of dollars. But the most significant expense comes from running LLMs, which computer scientists call inference. These recurring costs can easily exceed the training price tag, and they are an impediment that could put a damper on the AI boom if a solution isn't found. The astronomical cost of inference is tied directly to the computing power required for LLMs, such as ChatGPT, to make the billions of calculations behind each response it gives to a user's prompt. 
To process these calculations, the AI industry relies on state-of-the-art NVIDIA GPUs that cost about $10,000 each. A recent report from Dylan Patel of Semi Analysis, a semiconductor consulting firm, estimates OpenAI's daily operating cost to be about $700,000 as of April 2023. However, to maintain their current commercial trajectory through the end of the year, Patel says OpenAI's products will require an additional 30,000 GPUs. Because its products are powered by Microsoft's Azure Cloud Computing Platform, OpenAI won't directly be picking up the tab for this $300 million upgrade, which doesn't even include NVIDIA's service fees that can run into the tens of thousands of dollars. But Patel's estimate gives us a good idea of the astronomical costs involved. After crunching the numbers, it's a little easier to buy Sam Altman's claim that monetizing OpenAI was an imperative to keeping the lab relevant, not a marauding money grab. Beating big tech to the punch in the AI race was a remarkable accomplishment for the tiny team at OpenAI. But maintaining that lead over companies with the resources of Google, Meta, and Amazon will prove as daunting as creating true AGI. On the other hand, it would be interesting to see how quickly we get closer to achieving tech's holy grail if OpenAI lived up to its name and shared the details of its models with other research labs or if Meta, Google, and Amazon did the same. Unfortunately, the likelihood of OpenAI returning to its open source roots in the foreseeable future is virtually non-existent, especially after Microsoft muscled its way back into the conversation with a $10 billion investment in the little research lab that turned the tech world on its head. One thing is certain though, with all of the hype being generated by ChatGPT and all of the money being thrown into AI research across the industry, the generative AI arms race is just heating up. The question now becomes, will the winner of this race use the technology for their own gain or for the benefit of all humanity as promised?